Hi everyone, it has been a while, and today I'm glad to show you how to alter a photo frame from IKEA using the Patina Pin Set from Fnabas in this time lapse tutorial. So, let's get started. I'm using these two floral dies from Sizzix to create some flowers for the frame using the bronze metallic paper from the Craftcore collection. I don't think this is in production anymore, however there are other suppliers which produce similar metallic papers, and I would think that copper is a better description of the colour, not necessary bronze had described in the package that I'm using, which I will link it in the description box below for alternative supplies of such metallic papers. The making of the tiny florals are pretty straightforward. All you need to do is to roll them in place using the quilling tool provided in the die set. And over here, I'm using three different sizes of tiny roses and what I'm doing is to roll them together in place and then after that, I will glue everything down together. The rose, however, is a little tricky to assemble. Even I have watched the online tutorial by Susan Turtney Coleman. You still need some practice to get the ideal row shape you want. It took me a while to figure out the various petal shapes and for each petal, I just die cut them in about 5 to 6 pieces each. So before I glue them down, I'm using my hands and fingers to shape them in place since it's a little easier as the metallic paper is slightly stiffer from the normal cardstock. So over here, I'm building a base by placing the large petals down first onto the calyx and then the butt in the center. And very randomly without knowing how the rose will look like, I just place the rest of the petals down, layer by layer. So I got this really funny floral shape that probably needs some reshaping and readjustment. So while the glue is drying, I try to shape and adjust the petals till I can see a rose. And here are the rest of the tiny roses. I removed the backing and the inserts from the frame and apply a layer of clear gesso all over the frame including the grooves and valleys in between the designs, making sure the entire frame is well gessoed.
using the brass paint as my base for the patina effect, you can use either the blue or the green paste from the set which has a thicker and rougher texture or whichever you are comfortable with. There isn't a hard and fast rule for this. The reason why I'm choosing the brass paint as the base is because I prefer to build up the texture gradually from a smooth surface. So what I'm actually doing right here is to paint around the frame without thinking too much on how consistent the paint will be like on the surface. Because after building up the patina using the other two pastes, you can't really see the uneven of the paint underneath. Sometimes, a little messy and uneven imperfection will tend to bring out the best result at the end of the day. I'm using a pointer brush for this as I feel that it's easier to reach in between the grooves and the valleys of the design around the frame. After the base is done, I start to build up the patina texture using the blue paste. The paste has a rather thick and sandy texture, therefore you don't actually need a lot to begin with. It is also advisable to add the paste bit by bit and gradually build up the texture layer by layer. Because I want to tone down the brass base, yet I do want to show the tone of the color underneath, uh, which will give a rather aged and oxidized effect. I dilute the blue paste by dipping my brush with some water and just spread it across the frame. As you can see, I don't really use a lot as I spread through the blue paste onto the frame. 
and I only use slightly more on the surface of the design randomly on certain spots as well as the corners um, around the window of the frame. is the heaviest paste of all among the three. It has this very rough and thick texture which gives a very sandy effect upon application. I should say that it is actually more sandy and more rough compared to the blue paste. As you can see here, I actually don't need a lot to begin with to build up the texture.
thumb of rule is always start working your way up bit by bit, a layer at a time. You can always add more after that or switch in between the colors of your choice. If you need to tone down the colors, dilute them with some water. The key here is not so much in creating a perfect patina, but rather more towards in building up the effect. I realized I need one more rose and had made a smaller one using the rose dye from Susan's Garden collection. While I was compiling my supplies list, I noticed that this rose dye very unfortunately has already been retired and no longer in production. Before I fix all my roses down, what I'm doing here is to arrange them in the places I want. And once I'm happy with the arrangement, I glue them down using E6000. The reason why I use E6000 is because of its flexibility and durability. Though this glue tends to emit a vapor that smell and is a potential health hazard, so do ensure you use this glue in a well-ventilated environment.
have done up a lovely settlement to go with this patina frame which I have more pictures over my blog. Therefore, do pop by my blog for more details. Link to my blog for this project is stated in the description box below. I also have listed down the various supplies I use for this project and links to where to get them from as well. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and if you love what I have shared here, do give me a thumbs up and remember to share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I shall see you soon again.